Welcome to another debate in 2debate.net, our podcast of debates. Today we obsess over something people are obsessing with for months, actually. I will argue later for centuries by now, but we, now finally we have a name for it. It's called fake news. And uh, the motion of today's debate uh, that Sebastian and I will uh, fight over is uh, stop fuzzing about fake news. It's not a real thing anyway. It is a real thing. Here's Sebastian. Hello, everyone. And you've already started the debate without no, me. No, 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 no. I, I read it's this been going on for centuries, maybe. <laughs> That's exactly my point. You're already adding arguments into our introduction. This is absolutely not fair. You get a minus one vote. By the way, I should remind our fans, our listeners, that you should not hesitate to not be politically correct. You can vote on our website, todebate.net, for each of our motions. Because I notice, I noticed, Dirk, I've went on our votes, and who's winning our various debates, that people tend to be very politically, politically correct. For instance, we talked about killings, you know, state killings, government, extrajudicial killings are necessary. And I got no vote, zero, against three for you. That's right? What, if I'm not I, mistaken. I think you are mistaken. Are these killings necessary? I was arguing yes. Of course, as yeah, you you're may right. know, you got no vote. Maybe, maybe your argument was just bad. Maybe my arguments were bad. I don't think so. But um, as I said, I think during that debate, uh, my natural position would have been indeed to be against it. But the flip of the coin had decided I would be for that motion that these killings are necessary. And I think there's some merit to that aspect. So do not hesitate. Do not hesitate in any case to vote for me, Sebastian, whichever side I'm on. I need your votes. I need to be winning against Dirk. Thank you very much. Today, <laughs> indeed, it's about fake news. They are a real thing. Dirk is going to say they're not a real thing, but he's wrong, as we all know. Well, I'm not only saying they are not, uh, it's not a real thing. <laughs> I'm also you going to say, mind. I'm also going to demand that we stop fuzzing about it. But uh, that's, okay, now we already stated it, which sides we are on, what the motion is. Um, shall we... Start right away, Sebastian. What do you think? Let's start right away. Let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. The Chinese have achieved teleportation. Now, if I say it this way, it is actually real news. They have done it, but it's confusing. It's mis misinformation because what they've done just a few days ago or what they've published is that they've managed to um, teleport um, light particles. They've separated a pair of light particles. You can read the details. It's not exactly the kind of teleportation that you have seen in science fa fiction movies. The point with that kind of snippet, the Chinese have achieved teleportation, is that it's misinformation. It's badly written news. In fact, fake news is just a short word, a shortcut for lies, misinformation, badly written news. It's just the latest jargon that we use to describe those. In fact, I will argue that it's not even the latest jargon. It has been used over, over the past. Uh, it's just that with someone like Trump and his surprising uh, victory and his use of lies at the highest levels of political power, uh, it is surprising everyone that someone to that level would be lying to the public. So um, this is the reason why we talk about it a bit more. But it has been across history, uh, something which has uh, been all over uh, written press and written uh, fiction and nonfiction. In fact, I've looked at Google's Ngram viewer. What is that? It displays a graph showing how often the phrase fake news have been uh, occurring in the corpus of books. Fake news have always existed across all the corpus of books. In fact, I've noticed a few spikes in 1923, in 1939, and um, at the uh, in, in 1960s also. I assume the spikes correspond to 1923, um, the post uh, first first the, the the aftermath of the First World War, and, and the dispute with Germany over the repar reparation of the First World War, 1938, 1939. It's all the uh, everything happening for the Second World War and the 1960s with Kennedy's death, which was controversial, what happened then, probably fake news again. Um, so there's a lot of things happening across history, and I've got so many arguments that I already, already spent my two minutes. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's already gone. What's going on? Anyway, fake news do exist. They're a real thing, and they've happened across history. Uh, I have more arguments for my third minutes, my three minutes afterwards. Now... It's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. 
Yeah, you you just uh, saved me time by stating all the different kinds of fake news that we know of. Misinformation campaigns, fabrications, propaganda, hoaxes, conspiracy theories. All of these are what we call fake news. And they point all to the same thing. Phony sources, bad journalistic work, and an audience that is not critically reviewing what is presented to them. Yes, the current fake news problem is actually our problem because we are not reviewing it and take it at face value we are in the generation twitter where 140 characters transport a statement and instead of really reading it and instead of really educating ourselves on it we we position ourselves and have an opinion for and against and make even electorate decisions based on that and that's the actual problem not the fake news now we have a u.s president and not a U not only him by the way who who starts right now or is starting these days a war against the media by calling them fake news whenever they say something he doesn't like. And the problem I have with that is that people stop trusting even good journalistic media. And people don't start thinking themselves, they just stop trusting. And the problem with that is... Well, then all of a sudden, the opinion of your body is more important and carries more weight than actual reading up on things. And this is a real threat to our democracy. That's a real threat to our day to day, uh, our kind of, um, way of living, because that means, well, if there is a scientific fact that sounds contradictory and someone says it's fake news anyway, then you can decide to not believe it. Again, that has been nothing new. These things happened before, but... The, uh, this, um, currently, um, because we fuss about it all the time, because we make it such a big point, uh, we really threaten to lose grip on how to do critical thinking, how to move forward, and how to really understand the world around us. So, yes, please, follow me in the motion. Stop fuzzing about fake news, and it's in its entirety not a uh, real and definitely not a new thing anyway. Next up... Sebastian, let's hear his rebuttal. Well, I'm glad we agree that it's not a new thing. Uh, I actually also agree with you that um, people have stopped trusting the news because they're mostly fake or uh, badly written. In fact, I think it's just uh, one facet of the two problems that you're describing very well. One facet is the fake news. One facet is not thinking critically enough. But both are equally problematic. In fact, if we go back to our previous debate, one of our previous debates, which motion was it's worth having a Trump. Uh, a motion I had defended, I mentioned that with people like Trump in power, it forces real journalism to re-emerge, the one which I had called the journalism of investigation. Uh, and this comes in direct contrast with the poorly written news from the past. So for me, it's a, both are real problems. I agree with you about the critical thinking aspect. Uh, we also had a debate, a motion about whether it's worth following the news. And I was the one arguing that people do not know indeed how to read the news or to have a critical opinion of them. So it's actually uh, worthless for them to follow the news. It was a passive stance. I'm not going to argue again on that. You also had said, by the way, in that debate, the news, when you were defining them, are things that could affect us or people we, that we care or, or affect people that we care about. You said, and I quote you, you're asked to make decisions all the time. In fact, fake news may have affected things so much, and you've just said that yourself, that they may have swayed the US elections. So I'm sorry, this is no fuss. This is a major thing. It may have actually changed completely the outcome of a major election in the US. It's a very real thing. 156 million results on Google when you type fake news. That seems very real to me. Um, and it's not more fussy than any other you know, a latest trend uh, that we can see in terms of any other expression. And fake news, as I think we seem to agree, is actually almost, almost a burnt out fussy term. It uncovers a symptom of much bigger problems of you know, the fact that we lose trust over uh, uh, polit politicians, over the media. Um, and there's a grow growing problem, as you said, with media literacy. People have are overtaken, are overwhelmed by the complexity of the various communication channels that they receive. Fake news have always existed. Um, it is just, uh, as I said, a spike now. In fact, if you, go, if you look at Google Trends, you type fake news in Google Trends, which is a free tool by Google, you will see there's 20 times more interest uh, since Trump got into power than the historical average with the term fake news. Um, so indeed, there is a more a spotlight on this. Um, historical examples, because we mentioned this existed in the past, uh, are, are numerous. And you can, uh, I invite you to consult the Wikipedia page uh, on, uh, on fake news, which is uh, fascinating in terms of historical examples, uh, all the way back to the Roman Empire. So yes, 
the fake news are a real thing. We agree that people have stopped trusting the media, um, but it's a, it's just one facet of the problem. Fake news on one hand, and the on the other hand, it's people not be able to to think critically. So fake news are a real are, are, are a real thing, and it, we're not fussing about it. It's a major problem. And now on to Dirk. It's not fake news. It's either news or it's lies. There is no fake news. What, what is fake news supposed to be, Sebastian? Tell me. And the fuzzing about fake news and all the discussion whether or not we need to do something about people following lies uh, actually hides the fact that there are real things happening that we should consider fuzzing about. Whenever something critical happens to Trump, to stay with that guy for a moment, what is he doing? He's tweeting something that enrages people and all of a sudden everybody is following some stream of opinions. Instead, um, if, it's, if it's fake news, that we, well, why don't people just read up on the facts and get educated? There is, I repeat myself here, there is either news or no news and it's either facts or it's no facts. It might be that you make a mistake, might be that you uh, intentionally misleading the public, but fake news is nothing else than just lying to people. And as you kept reiterating, yes, that has always been around. The real damage is not that there has been uh, misleading information and propaganda, hoaxes and so on out there. And the real problem is that we make it a priority to talk about this It's like, you know, that's, it's like a dog chasing his own tail by making a fuss about fake news. We are not moving any step away from the actual problem, which is we have crazy complex situations and problems out there that need solving. We have people of different ang um, looking from different perspectives at the problem. Some of them educated, some not. And we have to evaluate what is the proper course of action. And for that, we have to study up. And there's no way around that. It might be frustrating to the generation Twitter that you cannot really make up your mind in 140 characters, no matter how much the opinion resonates with you. But there is no way around that. And this is why I think we need to study Stop fuzzing about fake news. Fake news are, as a topic, distracting from the real problems. And they are not more a real thing than they always have been in the past. And there is enough journalistic work out there where you can do your homework to check the sources, to understand who is the author, what are the, the motives, and then follow it through. And last not least, one last important aspect here. I think um, we should We should stop discrediting people for thinking critical and having opinions that might be a contradiction to our own. Uh, one thing I recently heard is uh, these days, if you say in the States, I haven't seen any proof that Russia really tried to meddle with the election and that there was collusion, then you basically made also a statement which party you belong to. And that is wrong. We should discuss about facts. We should discuss about sources. We should try to understand where our opinions come from. And the whole discussion about fake news is not discussing a real thing. It's a diversion. And we should stop doing it. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. In conclusion, fake news, the expression is simply a shortcut, indeed, for lies, misinformation, badly written news, anything, you name it. So this is just a shortcut. Let's not argue about, about that aspect. But it, but it is a real problem. It's not a distraction. The reason it is a real problem is for something I have not mentioned, but it can lead to a, a legal aspect, which is problematic, uh, related to the freedom of press. Some countries are regulating the fact that if you publish fake news on a traditional or a, a media, you will be fined for that. So that brings a real problem of freedom of expression, freedom of the press in this case in particular, not only the fact that it can sway elections. In fact, it raises this wider question that I have been raising before. If lies can so easily sway an election, then that's a problem for our democracies also. So I would not neglect this. I would not dismiss it as a small or an inexistent problem or that, we, that, should, that should be suddenly disappearing from public debate. In fact, I'm... This is why I was arguing in our previous debate it's worth having a Trump because it forces uh, a journalism and news to do a better better a job at what they're doing. And I don't disagree with you. It's equally important to focus and trying to find ways for people to be trained, educated on how to think critically, how to detect which sources of information 
are the most valid one. So fake news are a real thing, and we're not fussing about it. It is a, a very big um, issue, which leads to fundamental consequences related to our democracies and the way they work. Dirk, let's hear it. That's exactly my problem. The fuss about the term fake news and the whole discussion around it leads to consequences like us asking companies like Facebook to do censorship basically on our behalf. It leads to people not trusting perfectly ethical and diligent working journalistic media anymore. And it leads to even more disinformation. So that's the real risk here. One more thing. Um, you said so many times that you agree with me on, on core things that I said. So maybe to our listeners, go to the page and click uh, with me for the motion. We should stop fuzzing about fake news because it's not a real thing anyway and start focusing on the actual problems at hand that can be solved by studying up, growing a spine and standing for real opinions and stating the arguments for and against it. Like we try in our debates. That's a small first step. Thank you for listening to our debate today. Um, as usual, please go to todebate.net. You can vote whether I or Dirk convinced you with uh, our arguments. You can go to Facebook. You can go to Twitter. Uh, Anywhere. You can, uh, what else can you do? <laughs> Anywhere. We're everywhere on the web, as you love to say. <laughs> uh, you can give us your feedback, um, add your own arguments to see what we could have uh, said to make our cases stronger. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Dan. Thank you. Thank you. And in case our listeners wonder, um, we do have a dashboard. They can go and look up who's leading in the debates. Uh, that's todebate.eu slash dash. Todebate.eu slash dash. You love your shortcuts. Yeah, I love my shortcuts. <laughs> shortcuts are <laughs> great. Shortcuts. There are so many of them that you can use. But this one is actually my favorite since we are doing competitive debates here. So um, take a look at it and vote for whom, uh, whoever won you over. Or vote out of sympathy for Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have empathy, <laughs> sympathy, compassion, kindness, whatever you want. Uh, Just actually, give me your votes. I'm actually, uh, you. vote for whoever had the better argument. Thank you. Fair enough. Thank you. Bye-bye. You always use the same argument that you say, I'm glad you agree with me because I'm being honest. I agree with some aspects of what you say. But this is a cheap tactic from you to say that if I agree with you, which you make it seem I agree with everything you said, which is not the case. Every every time I say I agree with you, you love grabbing it. You love. I mean, I do the same thing. Don't worry. I I've done this in the past. Oh too. well, uh, it's uh, maybe maybe something worth being being more conscious about. So um, I I actually don't don't mean to use it that way. there is a real danger that we devalue uh, the press. In order for the press to be efficient, they need an audience. And by always calling fake news and putting everything in doubt and uh, claiming that things are phony and not to be trusted, um, they lose um, audience. And the real risk here is that way we lose a very important, very important tool in our democracies to hold power to accountable. I'm worried that um, we may be missing one one aspect, which I'm not comfortable with uh, sharing because I'm not. Uh, it's just a hypothesis based on what I've read. But I am worried that the entire debate is actually uh, meaningless for one reason, and that is we naturally go towards the opinions that we already have. So news or fake news almost don't matter. It almost doesn't matter because it just confirms what you want to hear. Right, so it, it goes back to the critical thinking and the debate that we had about following news. But yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's almost a vain wish uh, that we have for people to be able to distinguish um, lies from news and facts. 
because I, there's almost no way this is going to happen. Right? Once you have gone out of the education system, the formal education system, what, what is going to trigger you? What is going to encourage you to actually develop that critical thinking? I don't know. I actually have no idea what would happen. Like, like let's imagine our lives. Right? We have, you know, family, we've got work, we've got, we're busy, we have to pay taxes. Like, what is going to encourage you to actually develop that mindset? I am worried that the, the entire debate that we've had is almost meaningless in light of the fact that people just, as, as, you have, as you're uh, um, correct in using the confirmation bias expression, and the fact that there's no way for people to develop that thinking um, afterwards, after they've gone out of school. But, well, um, yes and no. So, um, th th I could have used that argument, by the way, too, when you said, um, I, I was tempted to, to say that, when, when you stated that um, elections are influenced by uh, fake news. The counter argument to that is it's still people who vote and people vote not based on the latest headlines people vote on what they actually believe others to um, to have in terms of values and who they like so it's really hard to overcome that human tendency to basically vote who you like and uh, that has a lot to do with your upbringing has a lot to do with your belief and value system the people around you um, so th it's it's a similar argument um, so in that that i completely agree the other thing though is there are plenty of issues that are bigger fish to fry and where actually if you study up on them you find out and that's something that happens to me during our debates constantly that you find out oh there is actually some middle ground I, i'm there is it's not that black white that i thought it was and at least recognize the other position and come to a point where you where you can can bring out contradictory arguments out in the open without without accusing the other of wrongdoing, um, being stupid, um, being a friend of Vladimir Putin, being a friend of who, what not, um, but having a fact-driven fact um, critical uh, conversation about that. And I believe this is something that you actually can teach and this is something that is worthwhile cultivating because it There are so many things that are not easy to have an opinion on right away, at least if you don't force it. Um, do I know what what type of health healthcare system is the best? No, because I assume it, it's 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 scary complex. I, in fact, I this is the only thing I know about it by now, following uh, uh, the, the the things that happen around me, that it is scary complex. So, uh, what is the best course of action for it? I don't know, but I like to have a discussion about facts. And right now, the facts are clouded by person A uh, demands that B has to happen, and therefore everybody who's in the field with another person cannot agree to it because that would be against the belief system. And this is this is just crap. I. I, I agree with you. I have nothing to say against what you said. In fact, I, for me, this goes back to the debate we had on, is it worth following in the news? Because I was encouraging people to just shut down the TV, stop reading the news and instead pick yeah. up a book or read the, I listened to the debate again last night, as I told you. And um, I, I mentioned, I was encouraging people to actually read the political leaflets to have to form an opinion because, you know, when you get this in the mail, when you see this online, you actually don't read it. I, I, most of the people will never read the actual details of the political agenda um, in the real sense of the term and the actual or, uh, uh, or if you if you turn on the TV and you see like a 30 second uh, uh, speech cut out that upsets you sometimes it's worth downloading the entire freaking speech and just following the speech in its entirety 